guys, Gina here. I'm a speech therapist and a mama, and I want to talk to you about where should baby sleep when you get home? So the day is coming and there are some different options. So the big things that are talked about today are bed sharing, co-sleeping, room sharing, and baby in their own room. I personally made the choice to put baby in his own room. I will talk to you about my choice at the end of the video, but first I want to give you guys some facts and options so you know what to do. So room sharing is when you have your baby in your bedroom, but they're in their own crib or their own area. Cup sleeping is very similar to that, but you do have them in their own space still, like maybe a side sleeper off of your bed. You can touch baby and feel baby, but baby is not in your bed and they're not in their own crib so they're in a separate space bed sharing is when they put the baby actually in your bed so first and foremost let's talk about bed sharing i think this is just personally um something dangerous in my consideration it is something that's never recommended before four months of age of course so keep that in mind if you do decide to bed share but it is also something that is a huge risk for SIDS and infant death. That's just something to keep in mind. There are some things that could be dangerous in your bed. For instance, if baby sleeps in between the two of you, um, there's a suffocation risk or strangulation. That is from all the things that are in your bed or maybe from the mattress not being firm enough. So if your mattress isn't firm, or you have extra bedding like pillows or cords on your nightstand or the headboard, they can actually get their head stuck in places in the night and they could strangle or suffocate. So to me, bed sharing is not a choice that we decide to go with. I do know people that have done it with success. So that is your choice. Um, Co-sleeping is a better option in my opinion. There are side sleepers and things like that that you can put on your bed so you can touch baby, feel baby. Um, this kind of does also support those pros that would be involved with bed sharing. The pros would be for breastfeeding mamas. It really helps you guys out, makes your feedings a little easier to transition, makes for a shorter feeding for baby, so it makes you and baby get better sleep cycles and helps sleep your sink cycles together. So there are some positive things to co-sleeping that would be hand in hand with bed sharing. So if you're co-sleeping, you're in that separate area. Now I recommend for you, if you choose to co-sleep with a side sleeper on your bed, set it up while you're pregnant. Set it up early and get used to it being there because you will not necessarily at first be able to just roll on out of your bed. So make that transition easier for you, easier for baby, so you're not shaking that little side sleeper. Another option is to have baby in your room. Um, some doctors do recommend you keep baby in your room for the first six months. Again, not a choice we made, but we can discuss that later. So, if you want to keep baby in your room for the first six months, you can put them in their own crib. You won't necessarily have that closeness, and you won't be able to just roll out of bed and breastfeed, but you will be able to really keep a close eye on baby and hear anything. So, here's what we did. I had a C-section and slept in the reclining chair in the family room for the first two weeks of little one's life. I had him in his... Um, bassinet in the newborn napper pack and play deluxe so I loved that I was able to really keep a close eye on him he couldn't move around I also had a monitor on him right next to me so I could look and check that so I wasn't disturbing his sleep I did not breastfeed since with a c-section it was just a choice that didn't work out for me I had initially initially planned on that but that worked out really good for me personally after the two weeks we chose to put baby in his crib in his own room our rooms are back to back so we can hear anything going on in there, anything extreme. We also have two sets of video monitors, one that's plugged into the wall that's hardwired into the system so it won't go into our, just through the wall won't go down. Another we have is a ring camera so we can zoom in and get a better view if our internet's functioning. So for us, we felt like it provided us a better choice, um, especially for someone that wasn't breastfeeding. Now, why did we choose not to have him in our room? Um, we have two dogs that have been sleeping in our bed for years and years, so that is a change. Um, I don't think you should 
have the dogs in the same room with the baby if possible. They are still new to each other, so that can be a real big danger, especially if you're not fully giving your attention to make sure the two of them are separate or just that they don't even bump the crib in the night and maybe were to fall or something. Um, other reasons are my husband and I feel like our room is a place for ourselves. As a couple and our dogs, we've even talked about giving them the boot from time to time, but it's our place and we feel like that is just a place where we like to sleep and we like to be together and we didn't feel like having our child in our bedroom was something we wanted to do. This is your choice. There's nothing wrong with any of these choices as long as you're taking every precaution to make sure your baby is safe. So when you're putting them in their crib, in your room or in their own room, you're looking to have a firm mattress. You're gonna let baby sleep on their back and no blankets, no bumpers, no toys. You want them to sleep in as minimal clothes as possible to reduce them overheating and you can monitor the temperature in your home to make sure they're not cold. When you wake them up, check their feet and their hands to see if they're cold. If they are, maybe you want to switch to um, a long sleeve shirt. They make tons of long sleeve onesies that have great cuffed wrist, um, tons of baby sleepers, a lot of different options for you guys when it comes to sleepwear. So check your temperatures, know what you should be putting the baby to bed in based on your house. We typically keep our house around 71 degrees. So at 10 months old, our little guy is sleeping in just a short sleeve pajama with pants on and he is happy as a clam. He's very warm, but not overly heated. Um, we did make the choice to put Declan into a twin bed early. He is a good size little one. We put him in there with our pediatrician's approval. We got a nice firm mattress and we do have sheets in there. He sleeps with one stuffed animal with um, the stuffed animal doesn't have beans in it and the eyes are not buttons. They are just sewed on um, thread. So we feel like this is a choice we're comfortable with. Again, we have two sets of monitors on this bed and we're watching baby constantly. So let me know what you chose, why you chose it, and if you have any questions, please always comment and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks guys.